Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged black dude. I've got thinning brown hair, black glasses, I've got a grey t-shirt on, and I'm sitting in my office with a few coloured lights behind me. And in this video, I'd like to talk about charging your electric car for free and how I do it. Now, as you may have guessed, this is charging my electric car with the solar panels that we have on our roof. So let me first explain a little bit about our solar setup and how all of that works. We've got a 10 or 11 point something kilowatt um, solar system set up. Now, because our, our house is only single phase and not three phase, we can only export five or five point something kilowatts out. So we can only export out. So anything over that five kilowatts that we don't use just goes off into the ether. So it would be better for us to have three phase in the house, but we didn't have the five grand to install the three phase when we look at the whole thing. And we thought we're getting the solar panels, we may as well just fill the roof while we can and we'll worry about the three phase later. But how the system works is if we do use, let's say three or four or five, or if we're using, for example, seven kilowatts to charge our car, that seven kilowatts gets used and then anything above that then gets put out to the grid. So let me show you in, in our solar app and it'll hopefully make a little bit more sense. So this is our solar app and I'll explain a little bit about what's going on in it. Let me just go and refresh and see if I can get the, the, the information to refresh. So at the moment you can see that we have our latest power and our peak power is seven kilowatts up there at the top and that was updated seven minutes ago. We've imported 3.6 kilowatts today and that's because this morning it was a little bit overcast so the panels weren't generating as much power as they normally would in the morning. Um, that's something I wasn't, I didn't even think of, like I didn't even think like what happens when it's overcast, but when it's overcast, your solar panels do still generate energy, just not nearly as much as they normally would. So yeah, that's kind of nifty. Um, at the bottom, uh, over to the right, you can see we've produced 12.8 kilowatt hours so far today. Um, yeah, so we've imported 3.6 kilowatts. We've consumed 8.3 kilowatt hours energy efficiency, and we've exported 8.1 kilowatt hours in the morning. But if I go over to the energy, that'll give us a better idea of what we're using, when and how, and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to slide my finger along here, and that'll sort of show you what we're talking about. So at 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning, we were only generating 0.1 kilowatt. Normally we'd be generating more, but as I said, it was overcast. So the gray is what we're importing, the orange is what we're using, and the blue is what we're generating from the solar. And as the day went on and as the sun sort of started coming out, you can see that we were generating more and more. It says produce. We were producing more solar energy and we were exporting a fair bit. And you see that little spike there at the end there? Well, that's when I got home and plugged the car in. And if I just refresh that, hopefully we'll, we'll get a little bit of a better idea of what's happened in the last few minutes. So you can see there now it's refreshed to show that the most recent one from 1.15 to 1.30, we've actually produced 7.7 .7 kilowatts, we've consumed 7.5, and we're still exporting 0.2. So that's all great. And you can see in the Tesla app here that I've got it set to charge at the full 32 amps on single phase and we are pulling in seven kilowatts and it's going to take us 55 minutes to go from 95 to 100 percent now for those who haven't watched my videos before you might be looking back going holy moly it's going to take like almost an hour to put five percent into the battery that seems like a really long time something to be aware of is that the way that batteries work is that from sort of 10 to 20 percent to 80 percent capacity the batteries charge very quickly and once you get to 80% to 100, that 80% to 100 normally takes quite a long time to charge. So that's why there's that little figure there. So don't, don't panic, it's okay. Now here's the challenge. Because, because of various reasons, and I'll explain these reasons in a little bit, I can't automate any of this. So what happens if in let's say an hour's time the sun's going to start you know, dipping a bit and my solar panels aren't going to produce as much energy as I need them to produce to charge the car and power the house at the same time. So because of the system that we've got set up and because I can't automate it, I've got a manual to come in here and if I see any of those blue lines have a little gray line at the top, it means that we're pulling in more power from the grid than we're generating from our solar panels. And so what I would have to do is I would have to actually come into the Tesla app, and I don't know why it's gone into that, but I need to go into the Tesla app and actually drop the ampage. So for example, if I drop the amps to 
24 amps, then the car is only going to charge at 5 kilowatts per hour. And if I drop it to 20 amps, the car is only going to charge at 4 kilowatts per hour. And I can drop it all the way down to 5 amps and tell the car to only charge at 5 kilowatts per hour, which, as you can see, is going to take quite a while. Sorry, sorry, let me rewrite. Sorry. At 5 amps, it's going to charge at 1 kilowatt per hour. At 10 amps, it's going to charge at 2 kilowatts per hour. At 15 amps, it's going to charge at 3 kilowatts per hour. I'm saying too many numbers and my brain is getting confused. And at 20 amps, we get 4 amps per hour. 24 amps, we get 4 kilowatts per hour. 28 amps, we get 6 kilowatts per hour. And all the way up to 32, we get 7 kilowatts per hour, which is the fastest that I can charge it on my wall charger with a single phase house. Um, three phase we're not going to get into, but if you had three phase, you could charge it up to 11 kilowatts. So I have to manage all of this manually, which is a really, um, to be quite frank, to be a pain in the tush. Now, there's two ways that I could manage this automatically and have software do all these you know, making it charge faster and slower and do it all automatically for me. The first one is we could have gotten a wall charger that does that automatically, and there are quite a few out there. We've actually got the Tesla one, which ironically is like one of the cheapest wall charging units you can get for the home. So we just went with that. I think it was about $750 when we bought it, and then installation is on top, and that can vary depending on how much cable needs to be laid to, to set it up. But so we paid $750 for that. If you double that to about $1,400, you can get um, a wall charge from a company called Zappy, which is a bit more advanced. And the Zappy one will actually automatically, depending on how much power is coming in from your solar panels, it will adjust the charge for your car and it'll only use solar and it won't take anything off of the grid. By the way, I should also mention the, the, the power plan that we're on with our, with our um, power company is that from nine o'clock at night to three o'clock in the afternoon we pay about 17 cents per kilowatt and from three o'clock in the afternoon to nine o'clock at night we pay 30 cents per kilowatt so we don't want to use basically we don't want to use anything off the grid if we can avoid it between 3 p.m and 9 p.m and out of those times it's a lot cheaper pretty much half price so you can get the zappy wall charge and that'll do it automatically but if you don't want to get the zappy one you can also get an app so there's an app called charge hq and what the app will do is then you basically allow the charge hq app to manage the ampage in your tesla so you do need to log into your tesla account with the charge hq so you need to put in your username and your password into the charge hq app you can also do a token thing so if you don't want to give them your username and password you can do it around it's a little bit more complicated but it's doable and then instead of me having to go into the app and change the ampage like this the charge hq app will do that now the reason why i don't use the charge hq app is because of the solar arrays that we have um, so with solar you can get two different types of inverters. You can get what's called a string inverter, which means there's a cable that connects all of your solar panels to each other and then it goes down into a box, which is the inverter, which changes the DC, the DC power that's coming off of your solar panels into AC power that your house can handle. So that's a string inverter, but we've gone with a company called Enphase, which makes uh, micro inverters. And basically that means there's a a little one of those little inverters on each one of the solar panels the advantage of that is with a string inverter if your solar panels get any shade on them during the day let's say there's a tree or or something there about and there's some shade on them all the solar panels will run at the fastest efficiency of the lowest common denominator so if one of your solar panels is in shade all of your solar panels will go to the efficiency of the one that's in shade whereas if you've got micro inverters like we do then it doesn't matter because they're all working sort of individually. Unfortunately for me, which I didn't know at the time, which again, it's not a major, but anyway, Charge HQ can't work with the Enphase software. Um, from what I've read, it seems to be a problem on the Enphase size, though Charge HQ talks to the APIs, which is a way that programs and apps basically communicate with each other. So other companies, most of the companies that make the string inverters, allow Charge HQ to access their APIs to 
talk to the inver have basically allow the inverter to talk to charge HQ, whereas N phase have not given um, the kind of APIs that charge HQ needs access to in order to work with the N phase micro inverter. So if you've got solar and you're looking at a string inverter, you could use charge HQ. If you don't have um, a string inverter and you've got micro inverters like we do, you could look at the Zappy wall charger. But again, the Zappy wall charger is going to be almost double, if not around there, of the Tesla wall charger. In hindsight, should have gotten the Zappy one, but you know, we, we're spending a we're spending a fair chunk of change on the car already. We didn't want to fork out even more, but you know, penny wise, pound foolish, I think the phrase is. Um, so yes, in summation, if you don't have solar at the moment and you're looking at solar, have a look at whether a string inverter system or a micro inverter system makes sense to you. And I think rather, don't let this video guide you on that. Um, you know, get the right solar for your house and how it charges your car, well, that's a bonus. So if you're getting um, micro inverters though, it might be worth looking at a, a Zappy wall charger for your house if you're looking at a wall charger because that means, again, you can just have the Zappy wall charger automatically adjust the level of charge that your car is pulling from the solar panels so it only uses solar when available. Um, if you've got a string inverter, you're getting a string inverter, you don't necessarily need a Zappy because you could use the Charge HQ app to control that automatic sort of system. And again, go onto all of their websites and just check because Charge HQ works with most cars, but it doesn't work with all cars, all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I hope that's helpful. I mean, I'm thrilled with the fact that we pretty much don't pay to fill our car 90% of the time because we're filling it at home off the solar panels. Um, I think it's definitely well worth something looking at. And Eventually down the track, when we've got the money, we will be looking at getting a, a home battery. Um, and that's something that's that, that I'm, yeah, I'm really hoping we can do soon. One thing to be aware of, like, I didn't realize this when I started on this whole solar battery journey. Just because you're getting solar doesn't mean that your house will have power if there's a power failure. So the way that the system works is if you've got solar and the, and the power goes off, like there's a grid failure, your house will lose power as well. The reason for that is because they've got to cut your house off from the grid because if your house is putting power into the grid from the solar panels and someone's working on those cables, that makes those cables potentially live and very dangerous. So you're shut down. But if you have a home battery, you can set up your system so that when you are shut off from the grid, your home uses the battery, and therefore when there's a power failure, your house does keep going. So just so you're aware, just because you've got solar panels doesn't mean your house will keep going during a power failure, but if you've got a battery, you could have it set up like that. Now having the automated systems would be nice, and I think if you can get the automated stuff, it's definitely worth getting. Uh, but look, it, it is a little bit of a pain in the tush to have to manually go in and control the ampage while the solar's going, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. And uh, probably down the track, you know, in two, three years time, if we've got a bit of money, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we might replace the wall charger with, with a zappy one. But for now, it's fine. I'd much rather prefer that Enphase open up their APIs and gives Charge HQ the access that they need. Now, there might be commercial reasons why they don't, which is, you know, fair enough, your business, you know, your rules. Um, but if Enphase is able to open up those APIs, it would, it would make life a lot easier for for someone who's, who's a very happy Enphase customer, me. Um, I hope that was useful. I know it was a lot of information to be, you know, sort of bombarded with a little bit, uh, but I hope that all made sense. If you have any questions, if anything I said didn't quite make sense, because again, I'm far from an expert on all this stuff, please let me know in the comments. We'll, um, yeah, if you have found this helpful or enjoyed it, please uh, like and subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much for your support, and we'll uh, catch you on the next one. Safe and happy driving and, and charging and solaring. It's not a word. See you next. See you later. <laughs>
If you are look, if you don't have, so in summation, in summation, 